Christians Who Drink Whiskey and Their Open-Minded Friends is brought to you by Funny and Amen. If you want to support this podcast and haven't seen any of our other content, head over to our page at patreon.com slash funnyandamen. For just $2 a month, you can watch our podcast a whole week early and see exclusive stand-up comedy that can't be seen anywhere else. For only $5 a month, you'll have access to the podcast, the stand-up, and behind-the-scenes content, exclusive first looks at new comedy projects we're working on, and bonus, we're going to send you a t-shirt. Head to patreon.com slash funnyandamen to see all we have to offer. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash f-u-n-n-y-a-n-d-a-m-e-n. Welcome to Christians That Drink Whiskey and Their Open-Minded Friends. I'm your host, Kevin Hackenberg, and this is a podcast on the channel Funny and Amen, which you can abbreviate Ethan Amen. That should, enough should tell you where we're headed. Uh, I want to welcome my guest, Steve Ford, who's a great friend of mine and a creative director and creative genius. And um, yeah, he admits it himself. So the humility thing we're working on, but I am a creative director. That is, all, <laughs> that is very true. That is one of my many titles. So as you may or may not know by now, we the podcast is called Christians to Drink Whiskey and Open Minded Friends. But we would not be open minded if we only drank whiskey. That would be dangerous. It would be very dangerous yeah. as well. Uh, so tonight we're uh, imbibing in some tea. Uh, you were under the weather, you said? A little bit under the weather, so that's my disclaimer that anything I say uh, may be under the influence <laughs> of some type of sickness, <laughs> and I could uh, have that removed. <laughs> um, well, no fear. There, are, we, we, can, uh, we can beep out anything you would oh, like. Good. We probably will beep out a lot of things uh, on other podcasts, as you may or may not have seen Start already. beeping now. Beep! So... Steve, yes, let's sir. just do a little background. A little background. Um, I'm, am I holding this too? <laughs> no, I, just, I was going to take a sip. Is, okay. is it hot? Is it cool? Is it... It's good. Mm. Therapeutic. Very nice. So, we got a lot of toys here. Tell, tell us about you. Like, give me, if like, who is <sighs> Steve Ford? Wow. Uh, that's, a, that's a loaded question. Steve Ford is many things. He has titles. He has a family. Let's start with his family. He's... Married his high school sweetheart. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and we're going on 25 years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's good. That's a good accomplishment. It days. is. It's a big, it's a big one. Uh, 25 years this uh, coming year. And I'm a creative person. Uh, I've been creative my whole life. I've been creative when, when did When did you first know that you were like a creative person? Like when, when did that kind of reveal to you? I, I knew I had... Uh, creativity. I didn't know there was a name for it, but I, I just I understood design. I appreciated it. There were things I noticed that were uh, I was just observant from a young kid, and I drew a lot of little ninjas and Spider Mans and Batmans in the corners of my test papers, and uh, had a fascination with those sorts of things. So um, we dive in a little bit deeper for mm -hmm. our audience because they don't know you like I do. Yeah. Um, so we we met yes uh, at a, a friend's bachelor, bachelor party. Bachelor party, yes. And, whoa, that's the kind of nope. I guess it is. Nope. <laughs> we that. were out at David Buster's. Yeah, that is, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Christian Christian bachelor parties. It was a lot they of get diet crazy. Coke. There was a lot, a lot of, of diet, diet Coke. Coke. Yeah. There might have been some uh, yeah. Roman Cokes as well. That might have been. There might have been one. <laughs> it was it was it was probably it was mine. Yours. Uh, the. Uh, but we we you were starting to design yep. uh, toys. I was, and some of them are here. This this is the one I believe that was the first off this the, my the first, presses. That was my first toy. I um, Mechabot, it's called Mechabot. Uh, wow, yeah. So that was I want to say two thousand three. Yeah, we were at a bachelor party, and I was talking, and you were across the room, and you were staring at me because I think creative uh, entrepreneurial types sort of find each other. In you had something on your face. That was, that's how I threw that's it. Was it this? <laughs> no, By the way, I'm kidding. I just started shaving. The, I didn't stop shaving in the beginning of November. I think nice. I'm doing, doing okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, no. um, yeah, so started to design toys. I I loved 
I think toys are sort of the manifestation of affection for a kid. They like a character and they want to hold it and there's a whole world there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for me play play like like you you your imagination can go wild and in, in, in a three dimensional space too there's a there yeah there's a whole there's a whole mind space that goes on with a kid who wants to be able to control the world because he can't control the world mm. the real world oh yeah, man yeah, there's yeah, a god yeah. there's a god complex yeah, there well, uh, right away a little bit yeah world building right i mean what, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah world building so yeah, yeah. so the idea of having this thing and being able to reproduce what you saw or imagine a thing and do that and that comes in the form of your hands, right? Yeah. How do you get it out of your head and into your hands? You draw it, you paint it, you sculpt it, yeah. you build something. Cool. Yeah. The, um, so this, so that. So, so it's been, it's been a while. So we, we've done a lot of original stuff. We have Megabot. Mm -hmm. We have his enemies, some of the uh, the monsters. Yeah. And and but then you have other stuff too. Um, this uh, we see Buck Rogers back here. A very, mm -hmm. a very. I mean, Steve has been doing since I've known him. You've done a lot of different uh, runs of different very collectible toys. Mm -hmm. Very high end stuff. Uh, this Buck Rogers, and you re released what a lot of people, our viewers will know is the gun, the ray gun mm -hmm. that many older people had, older of our fans have had on like um, back in the day, the ray gun. Talk yeah. about that. So, 1930s, there, well, so first off, Buck Rogers is like the, the godfather of sci fi uh, from the 1920s. So, uh, Jetpacks and ray guns and, and rocket ships were all uh, conceived, and that art was conceived in the 20s and in the 30s. So when we think about things like um, Star Wars and Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica and those sorts of things that you and I and now the this new generation consumes, all of those designs were they they were really created 80 years ago 90 years ago yeah. and they haven't really changed all that much there's been sort of jumps in iterations so i started doing that i had i did a, a reissue of a gun from the 30s yeah uh and if you guys if you guys are familiar with the uh the foo fighters, fighters album it's that, gun. it's that gun so steve licensed that gun mm -hmm. and reissued it in a very beautiful wood box it's beautiful yeah and so that's the that's a buck rogers figure we did i i did limited edition runs so Sometimes they're under a thousand, or sometimes they're under two hundred. So really small runs. Um, they're the kind of people that buy them are people who are older, who enjoyed the character as a kid, or people who are art directors, and this inspired yeah. them. But I got I have letters from people that are in their thirties and people in their eighties, and yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. And this this is one of your other licensed properties, the mm -hmm. Shadow. It's a figure. And you were just telling me I bought these off of you, and you were telling me you might have actually gift gifted me one of these because of our. Yeah, I signed ones. it to eBay. To eBay. <laughs> to eBay. Love Steve. <laughs> but this one you said was like you know originally like a three hundred dollar product, and now it's jumped up to like seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, I mean what happens is you make a short run, you sell them to the super fans, and then sometime later somebody goes, "I wish I had bought that," or mm. "I wasn't in that time," or they want to fill out a collection, or they're trying to make a series of golden age heroes or whatever and so they have, there's sort of a secondary market that cool interesting yeah. but that's cool to see your work uh uh grow in value i guess oh i've also seen it in the dollar bid so that's been good too <laughs> <laughs> i've seen i've seen uh yeah i've seen it go but and there's something very that's humbling. humbling yeah yeah i have a buddy who owns a toy store i have two two friends that own toy stores nearby um one in merchantville and one in oakland and whenever I'm about to do a toy project, I go to their stores and I look and see the graveyard of, you know, the dollar of the things that have been awesome and they were so important. And now they're like broke, their arms broken off and yeah, they're 25 yeah. cents. And it's humbling to just make sure that I get perspective. On, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so right now you're working on a project uh, called uh, Forgotten Future. Correct. And uh, that's kind of like a, a reboot of some stuff, but uh, I don't want to talk about that too much. But I wanted to, I wanted to you bring this stuff, so thank you yeah, for sure. bringing it and showing it. Yeah, because I think your your creativity has manifested itself. Uh, you know, with us, we're manifesting this fest in a in a digital space, like a two mm -hmm. D motion. But yours has kind of like whoop, morphed into three D, and that's why we've collaborated because mm -hmm. you know the idea of creating characters and then turning them into toys, and I think that that's something that's. That's kind of cool about that, you know? Yeah, I, I I think that there's... What's really interesting in terms of today, well, there's a ton of reboots and there's a ton of, like... Uh, uh, there's not a lot of fresh ideas. They're, mm -hmm. they're going back and mining ideas that were actually borrowed from, from decades earlier. So what I'm trying to do, and I think you and I are trying to do, is create 
the thing that that uh, the property and the story and and the the world that somebody can enjoy and sort of find themselves in and explore that world so that there's i mean right now we're kind of running out of star wars space and we're running out of certain things are kind of Oh, they're themselves. trying, though. Yeah, they're... You know, well, they're, well, they are, and it's not for lack of trying, yeah. but there's we can go off on a whole topic about uh, there's a lot, there's a lot ingredients and how who's well, using what. And there's been a lot of how you know that 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 world was really well cast, even from the first uh, Star Wars. There's a whole world that was created with different planets, and so there's lots of opportunities for yeah. uh, fans and uh, professionals alike to. Uh, to mine that world for new stories, new characters. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting. What what I what I enjoy, and I think this is like I grew up in the '90s. We grew up in the '90s. Yeah. And I would listen to certain music, and I would go, "Man, that sounds like this stuff that I heard about when yeah. I was a kid, or I heard it in a just." And you sort of, I, I did a bit of a historical jump. I would find my way back to where did some of these original sounds come from? Where did yeah. these, some of these original stories come from? And so, you know, Star Wars is is a fairy tale that comes from Flash Gordon that comes from this. They all have these sort of origins and they're cyclical. Yeah. So there's a real interesting thing from a, if when we can get into like businessy stuff, but there's a cycle to these every 10 years, there's somebody coming up with this ingredients and these set of ingredients and they want to throw them out into the world and, and hope that because everyone sort of loves these themes, right? Space and fantasy and Westerns and, and gangster. All these are sort of yeah. flavors that get a store. They, Flavors plus story equals some type of property. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. What um, so go back to the, so the creativity moment. Yeah. Like, what? How did you? You said you, you you were doodling, and then like when when was the first time you decided to make a physical toy? When did I decide to make a physical? But you, you well, were collecting. You were collecting. Yeah, other I, stuff. I was collecting toys far beyond the, and this was way before it was anything except like now it's acceptable. Like nerd culture yeah. is. is Pop culture is mainstream. Yeah. I mean, if the if the Joker is now the most profitable comic book movie, it hit a billion dollars. So yeah. it's mainstream, right? Yeah. Um, but way back when there was a lot of shame around the <laughs> surrounding all this. <laughs> and, I mean, we grew up like grew, we grew up in the eighties slash nineties, right? So eighties slash nineties, there were these people called jocks. Yeah. And they were nerds, and they were sort of. So I had a little bit of this. I like this stuff, but I'm not advertising that I like this. Yeah. Stuff. So I used to I used to collect stuff and I had a handful of friends. We used to like enjoy it, enjoy and collect and read comic books and watch these movies. Or um, when I first started making toys uh, and was serious about it, it was actually out of it was an act of sort of inspiration and desperation. Um, I was working for myself, doing freelance work, and I was trying to prove I could do Flash and show people I knew how to program and design and do all this stuff, and I needed a muse. And so I designed this character called Mechabot, who's inspired by like '70s Japanese robots plus Batman. And uh, I thought, well, you know what would be cool? What if I just made a toy? And what would be co- like? What would be cooler? I could sit there and draw a thousand. I could draw a comic book, or draw twenty comic books, or draw this, or draw that. But having that physical piece, and and actually, it was one of those rare times where an idea really worked, and I. I made it and had it manufactured. I met some really cool people along the way that are now like super successful and, and sort of we all came together in a moment and now everybody's doing some cool stuff. Um, but I had one, one of my best sort of compliments was I took this to San Diego Comic Con, which is like yeah. the Mecca. It's Comic Con. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, if you don't know who Comic Con is, then it's yeah. The yeah, yeah. And uh, right now it's like, I, I want to say it's like 200,000. It's an airport full of yeah. nerds and yeah. B- uh, bo and dressed dressed as nerds. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, awesome. cosplay. Uh, by the way, as, I say uh... that so affectionately. Like <laughs> that's a for us by us kind of moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, hey, uh, band and bowling here, varsity letters, you know. So um, I got it. Are you bullying me? Uh, okay. So uh, so this is so I had this at the at that convention, and I had people who came up to me like, I think I remember this from the 1970s. I think I remember this. And that's I'm like, cool. That's really great. Uh, what do you want to? How much would you offer me for? Because I, I have no idea how the reception's going. I just went out yeah. there and, and tried. And, what, that was. Yeah. Um, were you, did you have a table, or you just were walking? We had around? a booth. No, yeah. we had a booth, and, and you went for it. Yeah, I went for it, and I part of it was we. I actually got a costume made, like a full size costume yeah, yeah. with a big helmet, and uh, we filmed a little thing on a on a over in Jersey. There was a, a defunct. Um, 
what are they called? Power plant or something? No, yeah, it was like a parking lot yeah. that was part of an old drive-in movie theater. So it was really interesting. It was all overgrown, so it looked like one of these like giant monster movie sort of uh, you yeah. know, areas. So we filmed the thing. My It was really hot out, and it was like a week before we were going. And that was you and I got together, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you did the editing. Yeah. That was crazy. So was I took great. that, we showed it. And it, it had the right feel and the right vibe, yeah. and it worked. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it worked. Yeah. And, and, uh, You're making content early. Started making content early, yeah. yeah. And what was weird was I had friends that went off and started doing more toys. Yeah. And I went, oh, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to develop the IP further. And I went down an IP path that had led to a lot of interesting cul-de-sacs and dead ends. And, uh, and then I'm like, boy, I wish I was just making toys. <laughs> I think that was more fun just making toys. Yeah, so. That's cool, man. Yeah. What, um, so... Also, you know, we, we met each other through our friend, and we've had some very interesting conversations. So I want to dive into some of that because, yeah. you know, as I'm launching different parts of my career, you know, we share a, a common faith, mm-hmm. common-ish, common-ish. I think everybody's faith is slightly different, um, even amongst labels of, you know, Christianity or Protestantism or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I... Um, let me just, just dive right into this. The question I ask every, all my guests, what do you think of Jesus? Or, or how do you identify yourself religiously, you know, hit that. Uh, I am a follower of, of Jesus Christ, uh, the Jesus of the Bible. Um, the Bible that is, I would say, expressed in the Reformed faith, like the Reformed Presbyterian faith is where I find myself. Um and that's simply Presbyterian is a big scary word. People are like, oh, who's a Presbyterian? All it means is rule, ruled by elders. That's how they govern the church. And, and reformed meaning it's not a lot of extras. It really gets back to what the Word of God says, which is the Bible. And the other, the extra stuff is the extra stuff that people added on, and it gets them in trouble. And uh, maybe there's good things that they they go, hey, this means we should express what we the Bible says this way, and and that could be good, it could be bad. It's certainly not sacred, you know. So, I find myself wanting to be as close to what the the Word of God says as possible. I think it's interesting, you know, like <clears throat> we all kind of grow up and then have been taught something as a kid um, we grew up in like a certain faith or not a faith whatever and then there are certain points along our life where we get get to choose choose your own uh, theological adventure mm. if you will you know um were there any moments where you grew would you grow up in this as a Presbyterian did your parents your parents go to Presbyterian church like tell us a bit about that no uh, not at all yeah <laughs> so uh, I'll, yeah well, we can get serious I grew up in a home with an alcoholic father mm-hmm. uh, irony of what we're doing right now um, grew up in a home alcoholic father didn't really know who Jesus was um, he was a rumor or an idea um, and through a uh, uh, really difficult childhood turning so your family didn't go to church at all not really i mean you know, christmas easter the yeah. ob- the obligatory you know we put on the outfit that didn't fit and that kind of thing and obligatory occasions yeah and and um there was uh and, and this was there was a history of alcohol in my my father my father's father my mother's father all that and so at one point uh we had real low points in our in our my childhood my and i have two older brothers and my mom and um, and somebody came in and uh, started to care for our family in, in, in different ways and, and express the love of Christ in different ways. I didn't know it had a name. I didn't know where it was. All of a sudden, we were just experiencing a rescue uh, bit by bit. And, what was the person's name? Um, if you remember. I don't. I wasn't the, I wasn't the direct person mm. who, who that came through. I do remember my, my brother coming home one day and going, I'm a Christian. And my mom going, oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. What what happened here? What's going What's the story behind this? He fell into a cult. Yeah, well, well you know, and, and uh, yeah. I mean, so, so in, upon exploring that, uh, as I understand it, um, you know, when you start to hear the truth, it, it the truth sets people free. So all of a sudden you go, I'm not a worthless whatever. I'm not... An afterthought. I'm, a, I'm beloved, right? I have. What, what, what made, what made you feel like you were worthless or whatever? Well, well, you, you, if you have, if you have, um, I don't know your circumstance, but I would imagine a lot of people who go through similar things to what I went through, having a, a parent who is 
caught up in addiction and having people that are supporting that whole thing um, creates an environment where you don't know up and down. I mean, you don't know authority. You don't understand structure. You don't understand normal. You don't understand um, value, what, what's important. You understand survival. You understand daily survival and what not to do to set things off and what 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 unpredictability looks like. And so when suddenly an alternative comes in and that's expressed in, in love and care and truth and opportunities that you wouldn't have otherwise you start to go oh there's a different life out there you know mm. um so that became available i, I didn't know who i mean i <laughs> uh not having a, a a father um in the way that a traditional father was made me curious about fathers i, I like superhero stuff because i became fascinated with the ideal man because i couldn't find one so in my life god sent a mosaic of men to um show himself to me you know like mm -hmm. if you ever see those pictures i'm sure where they show yeah. all the little photos and then there's a photo you step back and there's a photo that's yeah. that's my experience growing up hmm. and so so one of my one of one of the grand experiences was going to a camp uh an all boys camp and i got to look around and go oh is that what guys this is what guys do like oh cool <laughs> they shoot they shoot things and there's a horse and there was a, there was a, there was a man were you shooting a horse, <laughs> no, no. Were you shooting a horse? No, uh, horses? no um near horse no uh there was a man named jim dernley uh okay. he passed away um a couple of years ago maybe last year and uh just a guy who, who knew how to who knew how to love people? He just lo he loved them with the love of Christ. What which, else do What else do men do? So they, apparently they, <laughs> they just, shoot. They are right. horses. They, so they shoot. They are horses. Meat, <laughs> they cook over open fires. <laughs> There's a lot of shooting. They horses shoot. They shoot uh, guns and archery. So these things were like you know they were like guy stuff, like normal yeah. guy stuff. It was it was experiential. Yeah. And it took me out of that world. I mean that's what camp does in yeah. general, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes you out of your world, and then you go. Metrosexuals, listen up. You are not a man. You've not shot. You <laughs> you're, you're not shot. You're whittling. Or... You're whittling. There's a reason to whittle. You whittle a stick. You put a marshmallow on it or a hot dog. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, real men eat hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that was that was an experience, but that was access to truth. Yeah. I mean, I I got to worship for the first time there. Mm. I mean, I I didn't know what I was doing. I was all of a sudden I'm, all of a sudden I'm, you know, and and we would go to a church and I was hearing the truth and I was hearing the truth repeatedly. And, and feeding off of that as a kid. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So just to, just to be just to be make sure our audience knows, and yeah. I'm, I'm not like outing you here, but mm -hmm. like you know, your dad was an alcoholic. Yeah. But we're not. We're drinking tea tonight. That's not why I'm drinking. Uh, yeah. My, yeah. 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 I. I so, like there, there, there's yeah. there. We we'll have back in the podcast and prove that you drink whiskey. <laughs> or do you drink whiskey? Or do you drink? Uh, I, do you drink I, now? I, I enjoy uh, adult beverages <laughs> on the on the rare occasion. Steve's a deacon at this church. So I'm he's a, an elder at a elder. church. Yeah. Are you are the elder? Well, no, I, you're I, Presbyterian, I believe, so you're allowed. You're allowed to drink. Of course, uh, yeah, Christian liberty. I think no, it's a wonderful Baptist. thing. God made amazing things for us to enjoy yeah. in this world, man. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Coming from. Uh, you know, having your a father, having someone close to you. Yeah, I had to, I had to, I had to evolve. My beliefs had to evolve. My understanding of when, when you know. It's I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to make sure that everybody knows. I'm not promoting drinking alcohol, because because uh, yeah, there's but there's a life. There's life out there, and there are things. And like, what do we do with them? I, I want the podcast to be very honest and open about that. Um, at the same time. Certain people have addictions, uh, have stumble into that. Have you ever found yourself? Have you ever found yourself looking, looking at yourself and comparing yourself to your father, maybe, and saying like, "Oh wow, I I could get addicted to this, or I could, you know, like, uh, I, um, or, or or does that, sure. yeah." So so let me say a couple of things. Yeah. Um, some of the most amazing moments of my life have been sitting at the feet of good godly men teaching me about who God is and I have a, a cigar in one hand and some type mm. of enjoyable beverage in another hand mm. and just enjoying that space so I have no um, I have nothing inherently against it um, is it is it a stumbling block totally it's a totally a stumbling block for people and uh, within 10 minutes what, it, what does that mean what does that mean for stumbling block so for so, yeah. for, so for people who I'm try, I'm wouldn't be to, familiar we're, with we're Christianese trying, we're trying not to talk too much um, Christianese here uh, but uh, yeah it's it come it's it's actual it's a bible verse and it would mean that you would 
put something in front of someone knowing that they could trip over that and it could do harm to them. And I would never want to do harm to people. Mm -hmm. um, well, I should say my, me and my godly moment, in, in, my, in God in me doesn't you're, want to do harm to people. So you would, me shoot, and my, you would yeah. shoot and archery things and cook meat, but yeah. no, do no harm. I don't want to do any harm. Process uh, meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the the idea of go out, go out and hunt your hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Only eat what you can hunt. Um, so so the idea of I, my my thinking on it had to evolve. I had, there was a time where it was all scary. And, and that's okay. That was perfectly fine. All of it was, was drinking all was all scary. Oh. Alcohol was all scary. All that stuff was stay a thousand yards away and until I gr grew up. And when I grew up and I could see, oh, that's how it's done well. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, then it's not. it must not have been the issue. It in, it in moderation, it done well, it in the right context. And, and the, the thing about alcohol and things like alcohol uh, is in 10 seconds it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, a, in 10 seconds. You know, all of a sudden you go, hey, this is great. Got to drive some. Oh, no, that's a terrible, well, whatever, right? Yeah, or, yeah. or, yeah. So, so it's one of those things that um, requires a tremendous amount of wisdom and self-control and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so hopefully I hit what, on uh, that and danced it. Danced what, around. um, so your dad's alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> and so what, and what happened? What, finish the story of your dad. What's, uh, uh, is, he, is he still with us? No. Is he... So, <laughs> is this comedy? Is this meant to be comedy? I don't know. Is, all right, well, I'll tell you, let, all right, let me, let me spit it up. So. Did an anvil fall on his head? That's, no, that's, no, that, he, that, drank, that's... he drank himself to death. Oh my word! Yeah, yeah. That's, so uh, yeah, crazy. yeah. But let me let little me, Nicholas let, Cage, little Nicholas Cage leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, it more like it took him took him into his fifties, and it was a killer. It was a killer. But what was a killer wasn't the booze. The booze was a the manifestation of the killer of anxiety and lostness and. Uh, he needed rescue, and so as was, a, he, was he medicating with with I'm the booze? Sure, on some level, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, can't can't deal with the world, can't deal what with you, reality. What, what do you what do you medicate with? Oh, <laughs> it's it's yeah, that's it's a good question. it's uh, uh, what do I medicate? Wow, with? what is it, man? Uh, for well, me, for me, it's images sometimes, and sometimes it's uh, sugar. Um, I'll tell you this: when I have, we've we've had hard, you know hard years right like i'm sure everybody's hard years we have hard years so sometimes it's getting busy doing a lot of work and that's i'm grateful for sometimes all the work that's coming but i have to keep a balance so sometimes creativity being creative and doing something creative um with my um while we had family member dying and it was really stressful my wife was going away she was visiting her father-in-law or my father-in-law her father when he was passing and um while while she's gone, I'm having to do creative work to keep my mind strong. I'm prayer, but it's like I needed my mind to be engaged and holding on to different things, and work with. So all this sort of pressure was happening, and I needed a valve for creativity. And I think part of the project we were talking about earlier, I um I designed like I designed and modeled with a with the help of a modeler, a great guy, um, uh, like thirty characters in sixty days. Which wow. is insane. Which wow. is like sitting, you know, wrap your mind around modeling, designing and modeling 30 characters in 60 days. Just, it was an intense sort of, and I couldn't believe the guy was doing it with me. And he's like, okay. And we were just on the phone doing it. And, it was, and that was, and that, was that therapy for you? It was therapeutic, that and music. I mean, I'll, I, I have played the guitar, so I'll, I pick up a guitar and it's a language. I sit there and I, it, I, Play the A chord over and over again you, for you, hours. You, yeah. <laughs> a, a minor, sorry, A minor. Uh, it's the secret chord that what, plays the Lord. Uh, <laughs> so, but you're perfect in every way, though. You know, these, these are things you medicate. And <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> these, no. Are, these, are, these are the creativity you get out, and I'm just trying to get a little. I'm just trying to go a little deeper, and like you know, mm. like and just be real, you know. And I think that like, I think that like you know, you and I are both creatives trying to achieve. Yeah something like you know trying to achieve the next take one of these things and turn it into uh i don't know a, this, a money making this, ip you know? well that, that's a third thing i mean the mm. first thing is what's going on in my head and and all the ways i'm trying to express it so what's going on in my head and, and part of my challenge i mean there's there's kinds of people right there's there's artists there's craftsmen there's people that do one thing really well over and over and over and over again 
Um, and then there's there's what I I'm sort of cursed with the idea that I get ideas that are totally disjointed that are, are not all within one scope or one industry or whatever. So I've got a songs in my head and I've got drawings I want to do and paintings and jokes. My son, I've been I've been doing writing with um, my son, my youngest son, and um, at one point I had he had this idea he, he for a gift he got a uh, a slide whistle. It made no sense, and I'm just I'm working downstairs or in my office or something. I hear you know over uh, upstairs in his room, and he's just doing the slide whistle. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be funny if we made like. Slot, whist, the whistle master uh, for hire. You could hire him to do slide whistling, and so like it, like a whole hour was spent developing, uh, you know, like a telephone sheet where you put up the little things yeah. and you can hire him. And so I get these creative things. I don't know where they come from, and they don't stop. And I don't always have the time or place to put them, so they just become like frustration, cul de sacs of creativity. That uh, you know, I don't know where I go with it. Uh, do I medicate with that? I don't know. It keeps happening. But, but you just, but you, you just create it. You create it just keeps happening. Yeah. And then some things are profitable. Yeah. And some things you go, oh, I can package it and sell it. But it's like, I've gotten to the place. I think you've gotten to the place where, can you do it? Is it the answer is yes. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. The the question is, should you do it? Mm. And what unlocks mm. the should? Um, I'm I'm in my forties, right? So in your forties, unlike your your daring twenties, where you can make all sorts of mistakes, in your forties. You get like one, one or two more mistakes before you're like, I gotta stop this whole. I gotta turn around and like repent of this uh, whole direction. This distraction. Uh, distract. Yeah, I mean, yeah. time becomes everything, right? Well, yeah. uh, time. Where you put your time. Who gets your time? Why you do that? Uh, you, you. When you're, I have uh, kids, as you know, in my in twenties and in, in their teens, and they don't understand the the phase that they're. And maybe they're starting to, but like. Right now, there people are just sticking little hoses in them and like, oh, I get some time for me. Oh, let me get two bucks a month. Here you are doing Patreon. Ah, oh, just a dollar a month. <laughs> and everyone's sticking a little hose in it. And all of a sudden, month after month after month, year after year after year, you you really gained a lot of weight. Yeah. You really did suck- read a book. People are sucking out things, ah, time, so, so things. So what yeah. gets it? What's the thing that really gets the attention or what drives it? So that's where I'm. I'm right. in so that let sort me, of so let, me ask, let me ask you this question because yeah. I know you're heavily involved in your church. I am. And there's two questions I want to ask you, but then you you segue into one of them. I'll, uh, before you ask the question, uh, I may have to delete everything you're about to say. <laughs> so keep going. No, but um, yeah. churches. Churches. Uh, some people uh, that have had on the podcast have stated that being part of a church and seeing the hypocrisy there mm. has uh, helped them leave the church. Mm-hmm. Other people have, uh, you know, have stated that like, um, it's a church's organization. It needs, it needs people in, serving time to do it as an organization. And I guess the question, since you spend a significant amount of time recently mm. because of things that are happening at your church, like, is that a um, and for me for for me personally I've I've launched this because I was spending too much time at church mm. I was and I wasn't supposed to be there mm. uh, I, I still think I'm supposed to be going mm. um, but not as often as I did every Wednesday night for a meeting that would be talking about the color of the carpet and that kind of stuff mm. I guess the question is for you why do, are you so invested in the church you're in now mm-hmm. and what does that do? Does it help your uh, spirituality? Does it help your relationship with Jesus to be to be that invested? So it's like nineteen is, questions or is it, inside or of Or is that asking. one of the hoses? Or is that one of the hoses that's sucking out uh, lifeblood that could be sh- so? Oh, yeah, let me work backwards. So yeah. can it be? Yeah, everything can be that, right? Uh, everything can be drawing from you time and and your effort and your interest and your heart and all that. Um, I, I want to make sure I frame the question, the frame the answer the way the question would be better asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a play way of saying yeah. your question sucks. Well, no, but it's like it's like this. Um, everything burns. That's all burn. That's mm. gonna burn. This is gonna burn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna that, burn. That, I put it that, that, like, burrito, that, that, that burrito I had is burning it's right now. Burning. <laughs> so 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 here's what I know. You asked me earlier about Jesus. 
Jesus is king. Kanye believes that. Um, Jesus is king, and he is a kingdom, and he has appointed a place for his kingdom. Um, it is being... How, 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 pause. What is that? What is that? That is the church. His, his, the church, invisible. Now I'm getting into like Christianese, right? Yeah. But like, um, the church made of the people who Jesus, who God has said, these are my people. Um, those people are his church. They have, they meet underground. They meet in beautiful buildings. They meet in homes. Uh, they meet him in the woods. They meet him in that's the his, cities. That's his, that's his kingdom. Yeah. And so you're asking about, um, you have people all over who have different positions on it. And church is, is done imperfectly, but make no mistake, like at the end of history, Christ writes letters to his church. He writes letters to his church. His church is the churches of, right? These specific places and people. This is the, 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 the those that will be he, who he calls back are the people that are in the churches. Um, can you meet God outside of a church? Yes, but he's, he's bringing people to him and he's meeting especially with them week after week at churches. That's what he's doing. All around the world, a third of the, a third of the population is worshiping God once a week around the world. We get to join with people all over the, all over the planet. Well, what, 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 what number is that? A third of people are third heading of, to are, are religious, religious, are religious pro- ceremonies or Christian or I Presbyterian? <laughs> are, are some type of allegiance to Christ. Hmm. Some type to of Jesus. Yeah. Some some form of it, yeah. One third. Yeah, that's about that's about the numbers I've heard. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point are is, Christ- his... are these Christians that are giving these numbers? <laughs> <laughs> are they, I think they're just Instagram are these the followers. Pol- <laughs> the, pol- the polls are being done by the Christians, <laughs> you know, and the, when the um, polls are being done by the atheists, and they come out about yeah. a third. <laughs> but it, it, his his. So you asked what it, what is the investment? It's a, it's currently it's a big investment, right? Like. Uh, there's a there's an old hymn that goes I surrender all, mm. and I think about that, and I and I sing I surrender most, <laughs> I surrender <laughs> some, and it's like what is God calling me? And this is my this is my personal thing, but I think it's for every Christian and, and every person actually. At the end of the day, uh, there's also uh, there's like a Bob Dylan song. It's like you got to serve someone, right? Mm-hmm. So every Christian has to say how do I serve the Lord? What's He calling me to do? What's He gifted me to do? What's He calling back from me? What are the things he's put me here to do why am i here to answer some big questions and the expression of those things are when well, you get up every day and you work and you do your thing and you you do it as under the lord and you give him glory and which is to say you do this uh and you attribute to him the the worth of and the great the gratitude and the thanks and the acknowledgement that this day comes from the lord that the things i get to do come from the lord so the service to him i mean the church is going to last I mean, when everything else is gone, the church is what remains, right? The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So let me ask you a question. Did, yeah. you, did you ever, like, so this, uh, you're, we had this family life. These people came in. They kind of, like, showed you a better way, a loving way. You went to a boys' camp or something, and, and you uh, shot That's arrows and, yeah. and ended up in a church worship service feeling... Knowing the truth, being learned, what you're calling the truth, I I believe it too. Um, the did you ever uh, was that a Presbyterian um, no, organization? No, no. How did you end? How did you end up at your church? And you're you're pretty you you got some pretty solid uh, belief structures, you know that that you know we we differ in some things, mm-hmm. and. I'm I'm questioning like where where did you learn all that? Did you do any, do any uh, theology? Is just church all every no, Sunday, no. Sunday, so, Sunday school? Yeah. So I so we, when I first God, I mean, let me say it this way: um, God, I've gotten to know God by His name. So in the God in the Bible, God has all these names, right? Um, God the Father. So I know Him as a Father. God's a Savior. I know Him as a Savior. So as I got to know different parts. No, it's just like I know you. I know you as a film director because I've been with you while you've been directing film. I know he's a friend because you've been my friend. So I get to see you in all these capacities. I don't know you as a father. Your, your children do. So I get to know all these sort of different aspects that are all part of who you are. So over time, I've gotten to know God through people and through, uh, through a church. But even the church I went to growing up when I was uh, you know, 11, they, they didn't 
communicate what I believe now. They didn't understand certain things about God being sovereign, which is to say all powerful and, and in control of all things. They how, really, how, did, how, did, how did you how did you learn that? How did, how did you experience um, God as all powerful? Yeah, so in his word, in his word, and I went, I started to go to a Christian school who this was part of the teaching of the Christian school was laying these things out. And I would go back to my youth leader who I love to, to this day and I go, I'm reading this and you're saying this and can you know you can be saved? Is God actually sovereign? I mean, is he, when he saved, if, if you are the saved, can you lose that? If it says here in Romans 8, nothing can separate what do you. Think, what, do you think, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, I think what the Bible says, I've, I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded by what the Bible says to but, be true in my own so, life. So, so, so preach some scripture to me. What, what can you, like there, can so you. So Romans 8. Yeah. Romans 8 is, uh, my, my, my kids could recite it. Uh, but it's a, well, you lit, can. it's a, <laughs> I, can't, I can read it. <laughs> I can Google it. Um, but it's a, it's a list of all the things that will not separate you from God. Hmm. That includes you, right? So if God is, so these are getting the big questions, right? If this God is real and he made all this stuff and he says, Kevin, I'm going to save Kevin. Can you, and he's, and he's all powerful. Can you really run from him? I mean, can you re- do you really have the ability to resist? I mean, you can kick against the so pricks, you're, so right? You're, so like, you're a Calvinist. You're you're a Calvinist. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm persuaded. You're persuaded. I wasn't always. I am now, and I've been that way for a while. Yeah. Um, because because I'm a Calvinist because Calvin framed up what the Bible says. Yeah. The reform, yeah, 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 the reform yeah. teaching says here's what the Bible says, and other people sit there and go, let me. Let me look at this with this lens. And then yeah. there was these great fathers of the faith, like scientists, like like men, uh, historians that come in and they go, I'm going to organize this thought, looking yeah. at all of that. And that helped me to embrace and know God better and to see the connection through the Old so, Testament. So, Testament. so God is sovereign and he's doing all these things. <laughs> What control do you have? What what a uh, like how do how do you how do you how do you bring that together? Of, so you don't believe in free will at all, or I think there's things that coexist. Coexist. Yeah, I think God is, while He is in utter control, and these things are all unfolding according to something He has foreordained. They're happening in real time. Uh, we're given choice. I mean, there's there's mystery to some of these things, right? There's mystery to it, um, but I I'm. My faith has contented me to live in, and believe in that, mis- believe that and, and allow for that mystery to exist, that I can choose these things. And yet I know that these things are within uh, what God is unfolding because it's confirmed by his word. All right. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What you seem you seem like very grounded. OK. Not a bad thing. Sure. Um, what was there ever? Now or in the past, was there ever any questioning? Uh, when was the last time you questioned something and maybe had your mind shifted or come back to where you were at? Like when what, what happens when what happens in the, your mind when the questioning happens? Like there's difficulty. Let's just say that there's yeah. Well, you know, you you, you so you hear things are true, yeah. right? You hear about them. You hear a rumor. Um, you know this this uh, Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Like amazing, yeah. right? Like uh, people are lining up for it. They're selling out, and you hear it, and then you taste it. Yeah. If you taste, it. if you get, if you're lucky, if you're the lucky yeah, few. Yeah. <laughs> Popeyes, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. If yeah. Providentially, no. but no, I mean, then you can taste it and see that that's true. Yeah. So, so, so the Bible talks about tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. When you, when you experience, when you have that little bit of faith, and you go, I'm going to trust that the Lord's going to work this out, and I'm going to do what he would have me do in this. I'm going to try to, I'm going to endeavor to obey. I'm going to fail, but I'm going to endeavor uh, in faith. Um, the, the Lord has a way of returning back to you. Of re- like, it's not a, it's not like you put a coin in and you come get a blessing back. It's not, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't, you don't type amen and you get a blessing in 15 minutes, but you, there is a sense that you really, you trust that the Lord's going to work this thing out. You, uh, you you trust and you obey and it comes back to you as the Lord takes care of you. I mean, there's a sense where I have had to deal with that over and over again in my life. I don't know what I'm going to do in this circumstance. I'm going to pray. It's a foolish, silly thing. I mean, it's a silly thing. Yeah. Right? Like, it's ridiculous. I'm going to sit there and go... D- describe, God, the, describe the... Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, yeah, like... <laughs> 
God, you said you can do all this. Mm -hmm. This is your name. Uh, if you're saying this is your name, you're going to be a provider. God, I need you to provide. I'm going to say be your provider because that's what you said you'd do. I'm going to hold, uh, like, I'm going to hold this against you. Lord, would you provide? And th that's a prayer. And I've prayed that prayer earnestly and he's provided. And I don't mean that because I'm, I'm being, uh, I'm able to manipulate that. That would be superstitious. I don't say a hundred of them and I get my way. And I don't say it just right. But there's a sense where uh, I entrust him to do the thing he say he'll, that he says he'll do. And uh, I wait. And I may pray continually. And there's things I'm praying about now that I don't know the outcome. But, I, but, but the Lord has shown me that he's a rescuing God already. He did that when, he was, when yeah. I was a kid. He, did, he, he brought me... Showed me love through my wife and through friends and through our relationship and, and through uh, people in my life who he sent to confirm what the Lord has said in his word. So those things have informed my positions on things. And uh, over time, just as you experience filmmaking and you go, I read that in a book one and now I used it and that, hey, it worked. Yeah, that That's true. It, I think that's true for faith. Let's, let's your, your, um, uh, you're very strong and and you've been complimenting me all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're very you're very strong and there's nothing. There's it's kind of boring actually. This conversation is kind of boring. Right, so I, had, I was thinking I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's because like you're just like you know like I'm a Presbyterian and yeah we drink some. We're not drinking. It. Maybe we're not drinking. Other people tea. made that name up. I've just seen that like people are sitting there go oh, he's a this he's that. I didn't make the names up. What's I that? just Presbyterian or this or that, whatever. You but know. you, but you identify. I, yeah, I mean, that's a. I go. I think about the things I think about. Yeah. And then I go, what is that called? Does that have a name to? Well, okay, that's the name, I guess. Yeah. You, know? you found. You were yeah. like. You were like. You're like. I learned all these things, yeah. and now I'm. I fit best over here, um, with the with the Presbyterians. Yeah. It's not, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, let's if the Presbyterians start, and by the way, like the way denominations work, yeah. if this group starts to get all wonky and away yeah. from the Bible, uh, they may change some labels. I'm not getting tattoos with, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not, yeah. You're not getting it's tattoos. tattoos labeled with the thing just oh, in case yeah. they go and change their mind and decide, yeah. you know, everything's now there's trolls or something. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you a question. Um, what? We've had some conversations, some interesting conversations, because mm. as I've been, feel like I've been called and led to do this comedy thing and to mm. incorporate faith into it. Mm -hmm. You've been very, uh, whoa, watch out! What are you trying to do? You know, like when I'm when I'm trying to take creative license. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say not so much with God or who I believe God or the Bible says God is, mm. but creative license with storytelling. Creative license with like even characters uh, or beings that the Bible uh, portrays, like angels. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you know what's what's like the where's like the you're you're like this creativity guy. Mm -hmm. Where where do you you don't go towards you don't say you don't have a um, you leave that all stuff to be very sacred and you don't touch your creativity with um, with the Bible. Necessarily. So my question is: there's there's a there's a guy doing um, a whole Bible, my, uh, Dallas Jenkins, uh, Dallas Jenkins. Yeah. There's a guy doing a bunch of uh, Bible movies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Where do you draw the line as far as creativity goes with like portraying this this Jesus, this King? Yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's interesting. This idea of so I'm really so we've established I'm I'm a creative person yeah. I, I do creative things I've been gifted that way some say cursed my wife might say cursed depending on the project um, so creative license would say what what is creative license to you I oh you said license I think license to kill you, you said double, double, yeah. double license seven. to kill <laughs> double seven. permission permission right permission. license to kill is permission yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm certified able to do this. Some authority says, yeah. I have a license to do this. I can fish. I have a marriage license. I can marry. Who licenses the sacred things? If there's a God, God. Yeah. yeah. So are the... I think there's a God. <laughs> Good. Uh, he thinks there's a Kevin. Um, <laughs> there, there's a... He knows. Yeah, he does. Um, so the question is, 
if there's a God and he exists and he has opinions about things or positions on things, I don't say opinions like he can, he's going, you know, he's trending on YouTube or something. He, he, he has a position on things and he's spoken. So if he's there and he has a position, he's spoken, and he says, these are things I permit and these are things I don't permit. Out of the gate, how does that compare to create? I'm doing this for the camera. How does that and creative license come in contact? What happens so when let, they encounter let's, let's, one let's, let's just go. Let's just cut to the chase. Do you think that Christian movies should portray Jesus? Do I think Christian movies? Any should, movie should portray Jesus. I don't believe that there should be images of Jesus. Yeah, I think that that if we were given, if we if God wanted us to have them, we'd have them. We so, don't. so a movie because like because they uh, lead themselves to. So they lead themselves to people longing to worship a false image. Or so Mel, Mel, a Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, you don't think that God approves? Uh, do I think God approves of Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ? I think that um, what you have is, is God's word, and he says, don't make graven images of me. And I think people worship and I think I've seen memes of people worshiping Ben Kenobi, Obi Wan Kenobi from the the second Star Wars movie, because they're desperate. People worship crystal skulls because they're desperate. People worship money and sex because they're desperate. So I don't want to feed false things, false images, false ideas into a desperate mind who would take God's word and turn it sideways. And do anything less than what God would have yeah. Himself be represented. So, so you, so you, so this all this this sovereign God, you don't think that He can use? Oh, um, oh, He can use anything. He can use a talking donkey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, He can He can use anything. Yeah, yeah, He can use whatever He wants. He can use fools like me, and you. But but you sh but I shouldn't. As my friend, you don't think I should make a movie Does God, that that that, yeah. that portrays. Uh, God of any kind, or my where's he at? I, my my Jesus, he's in New York. Um, um, my 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 Jesus action how, Jesus action figure. Yeah, I think that I think here's what I think. I think there are things that are actually sacred, right? So we, you you touched on it, and I want to be clear. Um, there's things that are actually sacred, and then there's literally everything else. And the things that are sacred are few. There's a few things, and then there's and what, else. Are, what are they? Where, where, what, God is word. The things that are holy. What okay. does God call holy? Right? There's things that are holy. So the things that are holy are actually sacred. And if there if there's a such thing as sacred, like his word and his truth and uh, But you're his you're names, you're, you're, talk, you're talking very like you're talking very well, like Well, I'm trying to get you to or, it's an orientation issue. Yeah, yeah. Because you're asking a question that's like step seven, but if you don't yeah. get step one right, you're gonna you're gonna keep fumbling the ball down here. Mm. So if you get the idea that there's a there's a God who's spoken and he said what is and what should and shouldn't be and what is and what isn't and you believe in truth, then truth can repre be represented all sorts of fun ways. I mean, truth can be found in Star Wars and and, and in Lord of the Rings and in you know uh, the Office. You know, it can be yeah. found in all sorts of silly stuff. Yeah. Um, I would I would not want mistruth to be put out in the world. I mean, that's the, well, I wouldn't. Who did want you that. vote for? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about no because, politics. Because, I yeah, mean, no, just, no, no, yeah, that's a whole not, other not, thing. Not, yeah. not just not just who you know mistruth. I mean, are you on Facebook where where they're oh, saying yeah, that, where but, they're saying we we don't even care what's true? Yeah, but you're yeah. asking the question, what should you do? Because we talked earlier about what can you make? We can make anything. What yeah. should you make? Yeah, make things that are true. Yeah. Make them true. So, who's what does Jesus look like? Yeah, what does the Bible say he looks like? Right, he says he's ugly. He says he's got a beard. He doesn't say he's ugly, but he's, so so. He was, Jim, he was, so, he so Jim Cavell was perfectly cast. He's he's insulted or well, uh, the, yeah. But the point is, he wasn't and he wasn't um, anybody to be looked at. He wasn't somebody like yeah. who was. Uh, they looked at him. So, and so he the wasn't camera would have broken him. If we cast this right. Yeah, if, if, you, the camera if, would if break. you if you yeah, when we'll Jesus be break the we'll be surprised at how how normal he looks. I, and and I've I've heard it said that. He was uh, he looked weathered because of the sort of the stresses upon him because of the spiritual attack. I've heard that said. Um, Interesting. So so is that, that, is that, so the but, question, but that, that's not scriptural. Yeah, it's 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 derived from scripture. I could find it 
Yeah. Right. Well, in post, we're going to put the reference. We'll stream across You're the like, bottom. Yeah, yeah. But I think that, like, it's it's uh, it's funny. It's very interesting. Like, but you, but 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 but, but uh, here's what I want to make sure you understand. You creative license and what you can make and what you should do drives you, right? Like you want to do creative. Okay. And and I have. I believe there's this thing called um, the fear of the Lord is, be is the beginning of wisdom. Like, mm. um, he's real. Right? He's real, and he says, "I won't be mocked." Mm. So your your action figure, Buddy Christ, mocks him just straight it's up. Not, it's not Buddy Christ. My action oh, I'm figure sorry, is, but, he, uh, but it is an action figure. Just so you know, it does wind up and on wheels. It has and, gliding action. Yeah, it does. You know. Um, but anyway, you're right. It's not the Buddy Christ. Maybe just maybe he was just walking heel toe under and, the and, under and, his... and there's a huge argument that says um, it aids me, it helps me worship mm. him. I heard, I heard that a lot. I also know people that it took them years to unthink the image they were handed to realize the Jesus that is from mm. the Jesus they were told or the imagery that they were given. And you also know how easy it is to then manipulate that and, and abuse that and to mock God with it. So, so for me, it becomes wisdom becomes um, not how much I can play with it and get away with. It becomes how, how can I glorify him and honor him? You know how how many colors there are in the palette? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like use all the colors except for the ones that are sacred. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are there forbidden things, Kevin? I mean, that's the question. Are there forbidden things? Yeah, I would say I would say there I would say there's there is a uh there are things that you know are wrong. Why? Do you I know, know that? that the 12th cookie <laughs> in one sitting is wrong. Like my stomach will tell me that. Yeah. And I know that other things are wrong. I just, I, you know it. You feel it. You feel it. So you're going, so I would say that you're. I'm saying you, whether, whether you, whether you believe in Jesus or not, I believe that there's, there's a consciousness that you feel there's things that are right and wrong. Now, as a, as a Christian, as a guy that reads the Bible, you know, I think there's a lot of wisdom there. And I believe it's God. I mean, for me, I believe it's God. Mm -hmm. Uh ordained wisdom mm. but i think the interpretation is different you know the interpretation you know one one moment you read a passage of scripture and it has nothing for you at that moment and you read it again a few years later and and there's there's something that's speaking to you at that moment mm -hmm. for a specific reason and maybe even telling you something or or a voice so you listen to god's voice you ever heard god's voice uh, like audibly, I hear. I mean, I I'm confirmed. I in my prayer, I I'm having thoughts in there. I'm praying these things. I'm reading His Word, and there's a confirmation that comes. Yeah. But but I want to come back to something you said about a feeling. Um, you know, we, we grew up in a time watching TV shows, and I remember the first horror movie I saw. I think I watched like I think it was uh, early on. I remember what I remember seeing The Shining. Yeah. Right, and I and. The, like I think I pulled the blanket over my head, but there was like a hole in the blanket, and I'm like looking through, and there's a scene, and I'm like, ah, you know, like, and it affected me as a kid that imagery, especially you and me, and in, in the work that we do, the imagery is sh was shocking. Well, now I'm in my 40s, and I'm, it's I'm I'm way calloused over, like I can see a lot of stuff, and I'm like, eh. I don't think I might even notice. Did, did, you, did you see a thief in the night when you were a kid? I did. I saw those seventies movies. They they were uh, interesting. Speak, yeah. Speaking of horror and they feelings, were grindhouse. They were Christian grindhouse movies. Yeah, but, just, but there was there was no there was no. What do you think about those movies? Because there was no uh, Jesus in those movies, right? Not in no. those. Not in those. But we used to go to the Ambler Theater. Yeah. Did you ever go to the Ambler? No, so no. there's this theater in, Am in Ambler, PA, and. There was a guy that showed those movies, and then they would show the Jesus movie, which I, I guess is, I don't know, if it's shot in Spain or something. Yeah, I don't know, yeah whatever there's, there's it is. a ton of those. A, like, well, there was the, the, best there was story the one. Told, there's the Jesus movie. There was the famous Jesus one. Jesus of Nazareth. And they would a couple, show it. There's a couple of famous ones, yeah. And they would sing a specific song, uh, Just As I Am. I think they sang Just As I Am, and they would show the Jesus movie after this movie, and you would go in, and like we would go. And, and uh, man, they would just, that would just scare the crap out of people. Like watching. The Thief in the Night and those yeah. kinds of movies, and they would get you. They would do double this feature, fear thing. double feature, oh, Thief man. in the Night, and then the Be Jesus, Mark of the Beast, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> and then they would show, they would show the thing, and the guy would do an altar call, and there were people like booking it up to that thing, like yeah, you know. Yeah. And we, and we went, and this was early on when we were sort of figuring out what this whole landscape was like. Yeah. My uh, 
I just remember people running up there like, and we kept going, like, I think that guy's, this is like a third time getting saved, right? <laughs> so that didn't sit well with me when I was reading later on, reading Romans going, you can't lose your salvation. And I'm going, well, why are you, you don't need a second coat, right? Like yeah. hey, you're, you're saved and you're saved. But, but the, so, so you don't, so you don't believe in, okay, so I keep going. So you. just, just the idea of the image. And the reason I brought up the horror movie thing was because when we hear so what, what is what is the, what's the lie i mean what the internet's a great example of like all this there's so much of this stuff out there that it's devaluing information right mm -hmm. like the gutenberg bible or the gutenberg press and what it would cost to make up i'm holding it as if it's here uh it, it's heavy to me <laughs> <laughs> what it would cost to record a thing I mean, you're in, you're yeah. in the world. You're going to record yeah. on data, yeah. right? But you yeah. were in the. I remember when you switched from uh, SD to HD, and yeah, you're yeah. like, "Dude, I'm sinking a hundred grand in uh, HD," and I'm like, "Wow, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine what it used to be to record a thing, and now we're in a time where words are meaningless, mm. and it's it's literally noise, mm. like it's noise. Mm. So when it comes to pictures of Jesus and the imageries and and lies and we are ch the challenge of the day is what is actually the truth among truths right um you talk to a bunch of people on this on this podcast and you're going to hear a bunch of people who've got competing concepts right and what does what does paul do when he goes to the marketplace and he goes hey you know that unknown god i i know him yeah i know him we well, find he finds a way he finds a way to communicate with them in a language in their own language because yeah. they, they have a language of this unknown god they have a whole uh, they're, they're a all certain, statue to him or whatever. They have, a, they have a statue to everything. And, yeah. and and by the way, the Israelites did the Israelites yeah. in the Old Testament they worship in everything. Think, but I mean, what do you think about the? And do you think do you think the church is doing a good job of communicating to non-believers, or are we or are we bringing in our own pedestal, bringing our own, own cross, and saying, look at this, look at this, look at this, or are we? Is there is there a way to kind of like say walk into a situation and say, "Hey, let me meet you where you're at. Let me have a conversation." Or are we doing? Are we putting up a wall between like good versus evil versus? Yeah, there's you know, there's a really interesting sacred like yeah, we we're, we're over yeah. here doing something sacred yeah. and you're not. Yeah, there's a there's a really interesting thing that's I think it kind of get dis, gets distilled down to this. Um, this follow me. This is going to be a big one. Um, this is whole thing. This whole existence thing is about outsiders and insiders. It's about people on the outside. Pe actually, people who start off in the inside were taken out because of their own doing. And then all of history is about bringing them back in. Right? So it's outsiders and insiders. God, in and of himself, holy, uh, doesn't need a thing chooses to create this existence and beings and loves them and they're specifically the focus of his love and then the, and then there's sin and they become outsiders and he's not content to do that i mean i'm done with this mm. i'm done with the thing and i'm done with it it's served its purpose it's mm. done i'm satisfied and i'll move on and i won't come back although this is a nice hmm. but god but god wasn't content to just go eh mm. right he sends a son to go bring outsiders to becoming insiders so is is what does he do what is he goes to where the outsiders i mean here's i'm, I'm skipping ahead to where christ comes yeah, yeah. where christ comes is he goes to the ones that are that are the worthless ones right the whores and and the and the, the the dogs and the and the 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 worthless kid they don't bring him they don't offer him anything mm -hmm. what do they bring him they're not the important people he goes to the, the anybody's the nobody he goes to people and he, may, you know, Rahab, you know, Rahab, uh, Rahab is, is a prostitute, you know, and he goes and she becomes part of the lineage of Christ. This is, this is the business of God. Isn't it? So you asked a question about the church, that what is the church doing? Are they putting up walls? It's a porous wall and it has to be a porous wall and it can never be a full wall and it can never be a fully open thing because it can't, it, it's going to invite in things. So that they can hear the gospel, but they're not to. They're if if they encounter God, they're going to be changed. If God chooses to bring them in, they're going to be changed. Like Moses goes up on the mountain, right, and meets he meets God, 
And it comes, what does it come away? It comes away glowing and they're frightened of him because he encountered God. So these two things have to, again, coexist. He's bringing outsiders in. Is the church doing a good job sometimes? Tell, and, tell, and, me, about, tell, and, me, about the, tell me about the day. Yeah. Was, there a, was there a moment where you were an outsider and then you were an insider? Totally. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, I am, I am an insider, but I, I, I am a daily keeping myself outside with my with my thoughts and places I go with and and uh, my doubts and my you know just the way mm-hmm. I, you know but the idea of I remember specifically when going back to my childhood when my uh, when we were rescued out of a situation and it wasn't like it wasn't like Annie, right? It wasn't like yeah. we, were, we were like different strokes. <laughs> you know, like, hey, Mr. Drummond, my whole life is perfect now. You yeah. know, it wasn't like yeah, that. Yeah. It was, we we, became, we got on a safe, what began as a safe island and was, and started to build. We were all, you know, honestly, all we did was get off of a, of a, of a, of a burning ship. Yeah. And we got on and, and my mom worked three jobs and, and I felt like an outsider. I felt like an outsider. I went into the Christian, now you were talking earlier, I went to a Christian school early on and I and we were poor I mean we were poor and I went in and I was wearing um, corduroy blue corduroy pants because I couldn't wear jeans because I was chubby uh, long since embraced that but but I could and, and I remember this woman come I was a teacher she came up and she felt my she felt my pants because I wasn't allowed to wear jeans she put there was a rule there that made it that it was prohibitive to wear jeans because jeans were associated with things. My brother had a pair of sneakers, and the rule was you couldn't have a certain kind of sneaker. And my brother came in with red sneakers, and they were like, "Red sneakers!" And you yeah. know, like, <laughs> we, we don't even have a category for how bad that. <laughs> and and so that sort of arbitrary stuff, um, you know, it just it, it's prohibitive to actually giving the gospel to people. So Christ went to the places. I remember feeling like an outsider. There's days I still feel like an outsider. I don't. I have my, me and my family. Yeah. Um, there are. I've got. Did, did, did you did you did you have a moment of conversion? Like a moment? Did you, did you say the sinner's prayer or something like that? I'm, and, I'm sure I said it as a as a kid. I think I had a secondary like moment of like realization as a teenager. I think that that's maybe common. Yeah. And then in my early twenties sitting under good teaching and not like formal teaching yeah but like hearing wise men speak to each other and being having the freedom to talk and be wrong and say i think i understand god he's like an egg he's like the yolk and the shit and that's the trinity and like i was you know and they were like okay boy you know like but they loved they loved me and, and they uh, i got to touch it and feel it and experience it and then build a life around that reality uh but there's a sense where uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a split down the middle guy. Like I'm a man. I have management and executive management skill, and I've got a creative skill, and I'm a bit of a punk, and I'm, I'm I have you are formality. Punk. Well, okay, but I have, <laughs> but that all that's part. So I've never fully fit anywhere. Right? Yeah. I just so there's always a sense I feel like an outsider here. The conversion of God loves oddballs. I mean, He loves the the people that bring Him nothing. Right? They they're not they don't you know they they bring Him. He doesn't sit there and go, that guy's super valuable. He's going to be valuable to me. So I'm going to turn him around and make him want. That's not how it works. He takes and converts whom he will. And he takes everybody from everything. And I remember moments of realizing that, various moments in my life, I guess. Um, how about you? Conversion. I uh, I told this story before on another podcast. When I was seven, my grandmother put me on, on the spot. Talking about heaven and hell, put me on the spot to make a decision. Yeah. Hot stuff, clouds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lava. <laughs> I chose heaven, and then, uh, and then, you know, teenage years had you know uh, more choices to become an independent man, and yeah. and w- was taught uh, these things, and they seemed true. Seemed true. It felt true. I had uh, spiritual experiences. Um, that the wind would blow and chill would come to my spine or something would happen. And I was like, that doesn't feel, that feels supernatural. Hmm. That's That feels like the stuff I've been reading about. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that kind of reinforced what I've been taught. 
uh, in church and in uh, by being at different places, camps, you know, Christian camps and this stuff. And then, you know, I got out of college, another opportunity to kind of like figure out where, what am I going to, who am I going to be, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that that's where I kind of, that's where I was, I was really into Christian entertainment mm-hmm. and really uh, loved the music and how that just could um, be both joyful and artistic and worshipful and, or truth telling, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then uh, over the years I discovered this film as my art form and that's when I couldn't put them together. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't put them together. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus of Nazareth, real cool story. Mm-hmm. If I get hired to be the cinematographer or work as a producer, great, bring it on. But really sitting down to write it wasn't in my language. Mm-hmm. Wasn't in my language. Wasn't in the language that I, I, I speak creatively. Yeah. But what was in my language was was comedy and I that would come out through like short films or work for hire that I got hired to do. And then I got distracted and I got pulled into like the bad version. Is it if there's like a capital C church and a lower C church? Yeah, yeah. This was like the church that was spelled wrong and because it was all hypocrisy, mm-hmm. you know. Not not all hypocr- not all hypocrisy, but a bunch of people trying to get to Jesus by going through power, mm-hmm. by going through like wrestling. Mm-hmm. And trying to be like force something, force an old wine and new wine skins, or mm. old wine into old wine skins. Just just trying to force something not to be alive and real and in the moment yeah. and flexible. Yeah. And so I came in and be like, "Here's the way we got to do it." And then realized through this moment of realizing that I was the hypocrite. Mm. That I was part of these people that were doing it totally wrong. They were, we said we were following Christ, but mm-hmm. we were not loving each other. Mm-hmm. We were not showing each other. We were not sacrificing my will mm-hmm. for for someone else's terrible will. Mm-hmm. You know, which I think Christ shows that he do, he did. He's like, hey, you guys, you guys want to kill me? Perfect. That seems like a terrible idea, but I'll let you do it. He, yeah, he. He's about the will of the Father. What is Christ doing? He's doing the will of the Father. Yeah. They are one doing what they're doing. You're, you hit on a really important thing, which is um, God is really interested in having us trust him and having us go through a thing. And there's always two things happening. The gospel is on display in our relationships during a thing we keep messing up. And so the goal of the thing we're trying to do, whether that's, buy a building or paint a church or raise a kid or whatever the thing is god's trying to have us display this love and express the way he would have it have us operate in the thing with us having no guarantee of that outcome Mm. working trust because this is actually he's so much he's so much more interested in us having a relationship with him and then therefore one another right so love the lord your god and then love your neighbor. He's interested in like that expressing itself. So what are the results you're looking for? So, so coming back to like what you were saying about how people want to go and they have this thing in them. They, they love the Lord and they want to, they now want to express that thing. I think it's awesome. I mean, I think, and, and by the way, like Christians should be in the arts. They are, they're everywhere. I meet Christians at all levels of artistic industry, right? Like in film and animation, they're everywhere. Not everybody's making Jesus movies. They're and, making, they, and, and you think they they're should. They're in Hollywood. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's, be real. You, you believe that they should not make Jesus movies. I, it, I, hold on. Depictions of Jesus and, and stories about the truth. I am all for stories about the truth. I am, I am one. I can't be more for that. So you're the pictures, you, uh, you know, biopics. Um, biopics you, of Jesus. Yeah, biopics of Jesus. Um, what are they actually for? What are they for? Um, uh, evangelism, they say, to getting the word out. Maybe, maybe it's some. Maybe it's another creative person that wants you to. You know express. what? You know what's awesome at getting the word out? The word. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it's yeah. not. But the word has been made by these these writers, uh-huh. Moses and those guys. 
Mm -hmm. And you can't change the word. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but but thank but God. you're but you're saying you're saying that I shouldn't express myself through film with God as a character. Uh, God as a physical manifested character. George Burns. Yeah, I was I I wouldn't do that. I would yeah. never do that. Yeah. I, but are I you think, are you okay if I do that? Uh, why would you care? Why do you care why if I'm okay care? if you do it? <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to, as your podcast, you can ask me what you want. <laughs> yeah. What do I care? I'm curious. I, mean, that's, 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 I wouldn't that's, participate in it. You know, ah, but I love you, awesome, but right? I wouldn't participate in it. Okay, cool. Um, because I, because of those reasons, I wouldn't want to offend the Lord more than I, than I. Uh, so it's your, it's your choice. I'm not happy to, not to offend you, but not him. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice not to participate in those those kind of choice, in yeah. those kind of cre creative endeavors. But, but tell the truth. Tell people about the Lord. Tell them exactly yeah. with all the tools and gifts you've been yeah. given. You're, you use your comedy. Use all that stuff. But but don't do it. Don't do something he says not to do and have the ends justified means. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. How can it? And and a God you can edit isn't God. There's a reason a why God you can edit. He can't edit God. So there's his yeah. word. Is his word sufficient to get the word out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? How's he going to do it? Through what, what, preaching, what if it's not, what if it's through not, churches. Yeah. And then people going out. But that's that's the that's the 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 visual kingdom. And 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 you know, I heard it said that we have a we met a guy, Todd Komernicki, right? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about we had a, a great time with him. And uh He's like, you know, so many people are caught up looking at the crowd and the baseball game's over here, but they're looking at the crowd going, man, this game's terrible. You know, like, but they're not looking at the players who are, who are doing the, that's the shit. That's where the activity is. That's yeah. where it's happening. But they're looking at the, and they're sitting there making the judgment on the fans of the game. Mm. And I just, it, it was, it was helped sort of distill it. So I want to make sure that all eyes are on the real deal. Mm. in its most potent form, which is the form he gave us, which is his word. And think mm. about this. Of all the imagery and all the things we create and all the line, all this lighting and lines and sound and music and all that stuff, God's word is eternal. Mm. Your films aren't, this stuff isn't, God's word is. right. Mm. So, uh, you know, how can you get better than that? Like worship, like worship, oh, I'm not going to do a whole thing yeah. of worship music, but like yeah. how can you get better than giving God back his words i mean if you think about when christ was here and christ would go to church and worship god christ is singing the songs that he himself wrote in the psalms yeah i mean you get to participate in that that's, that's, like, a, that's, like, that's like a terminator kind of thing <laughs> yeah yeah, totally. yeah it's like <laughs> i'll be back i'm here yeah like it's happening but think about that i mean on the cross he's reciting himself yeah to give himself comfort to give us confirmation it's uh, it's it's it doesn't get more epic. And any movie you're ever gonna make, at the end of Star Wars and, and Lord of the Rings and whatever and whatever, all the mm. epic, the uh, my father-in-law would call it the eternal music. All of that is a faint image of this thing that's gonna that's gonna take place, right? Like we're I'm talking about outsiders and insiders. And yeah. what's what's your marriage? Your marriage is this picture of like these Christ in the church, which is how yeah. Christians view marriage. Yeah. So that's the end of time is marriage. We yeah. have been talking for quite some time. We didn't we didn't solve anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> we were supposed to solve one thing. What, that, I don't we, know. Oh, I had, I, yeah, go ahead. There's a solve? We, there's a solve? I there's a clue. I, I thought you were going to ask me this question. Like, tell me about here's Jesus. A, here's the here's solve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Plum <laughs> with the lead pipe in the basement. And thank you very much for being here on Christians to Drink Whiskey and their Open Minded Friends. I'm Kevin Hackenberg. My guest has been Steve was Ford. I, was I even a little bit open minded? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe uh, we'll, we'll edit it so you seem open minded. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and um, thank yeah. you for joining us. Check out all these podcasts on our Patreon, patreon.com slash funny and amen. And until then, F and amen. It's a big no for me, dog. <laughs> you can't get this. No, I can't get nothing. <laughs>